What's up, Renegade Nation? Before we begin the video, I'd like to give a shout out to our most recent Patreon supporters and YouTube members. Michaela Chaperonova, Melvin1185, Jason Poole, Echo, not Gecko, Mr. Pyromaniac, Canadian Prime, Pizza Killer, Vadix, The Q651, Tools of Trypticon, Ethan Benson, Rodarius Franklin, Harry Naylor, Grimex Law 22, Demon Gamer 67, Anthony, Biz Roomba, Jennifer San Marco, HD Gamer, Lorenzo, Croc and Co, Abused Oreo, Cregan, The Texan Pybro, Phantom Pyralis, Iron Metallica, Zero Chaos, Hunter Tober McGivern, and I'd also like to extend a big thank you to our executive producers, The Anime Hybrid, Joshua Fix, The Oil Guy, and The Gimster 101. And I would also like to extend a big thank you to our new executive producer, Bevan Brummett. Thank you all very much for your support. If you want to become a YouTube member, hit the join button right down below next to the subscribe button. And if you want to become a member of Patreon, feel free to click the link down below in the description to find out more. We'll see you there. Uh-oh. Well, well I found a dead body. Um, that I did. <laughs> Again. Okay, I am not self-reporting. I swear to fucking God. No, Are you serious? You, I didn't suspect a thing. So, we reacted to the history of the entire world, I guess, and uh, y'all like that. And everyone, Did you like it? Yeah, everyone was just uh, wanting us to do a recap of the history of Japan, which, yeah, the history of Japan was the one that really kicked off Bill Wirtz. Uh, I know uh, Bill had uh, Bill Wirtz had done some videos before, but this was the one that really like kicked off and just like sent sent his viewership to the moon. And when he did the history of the entire world, it was even bigger. But this is where it all started. And this was the first Bill Wirtz video that we ever watched because it was requested of us a long time ago. And, uh, yeah, Japan is an interesting country. It's had a very, very interesting history, which you dive back far, far enough into any country's history, there's going to be some interesting stuff. But needless to say, The History of Japan by Bill Wirtz is, uh, you know, it, I'm glad that we're actually coming back to this because... I enjoy these, uh, and I haven't seen this one in a long time. Yeah, I've and, never seen it, so... Well, yeah, there's a lot of videos that we're going to have to recap because you haven't seen them. And honestly, I think I want to get your take on it. I want to get your hot take on what you think of these things because, you know, this stuff right here is just so good. Dude, I purposely stayed off of the internet for so long that I missed out on so much that it, it's like a blessing now because everybody else has experienced all this shit. And they're like, I wish I had something to watch. And it's like, I've got fucking like 10 years of shit that I've never seen. Yeah. And, uh, and now I'm just, <laughs> and I'm just like the treasure troves of the past have returned. <laughs> and now it is our time brothers. <laughs> but yeah, the history of Japan, we got it queued up here. Let's give this a watch. And you let me, and you tell me what you think about this. This, cool. is, this is actually really good. So, good history lesson. Japan is an island by the sea filled with volcanoes, and it's In the year negative a billion, Japan might not have been here. In the year negative 40,000, it was here, and you could walk to it, and some people walked to it. Then it got warmer, some icebergs melted, it became an island, and now there's lots of trees, because it's warmer. So now there's people on the island, they're basically sort of hanging out in between the mountains, eating nuts off trees, and using the latest technology, like stones, and bowls. Ding Dong is the outside world, and they have technology from the future, like really good metal, and crazy rice farms. Now you can make a lot of rice really, really quickly. That means if you own the farm, you own a lot of food, which is something everybody needs to survive. So that makes you king. Rice farming and rice kingdoms spread across the land, all the way to here. The most important kingdoms were here, 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 and here. But this one was the most, most important, ruled by a heavenly superperson, or emperor for short. Knock, knock, get the door. It's religion. The new prince wants everyone to try this hot new religion from Biekt. Please try this religion, he said. No, said everybody. Try it, he said. No, said everybody again, quieter this time. And so the religion was put into place, and all the rules that came with it. Then the government was taken over by another clique, and they made some reforms, like making the government govern more, and making the government more like China's government, which is a government that governs more. Hi, China, they said. Hi, dipshit, said China. Can you tell us something else other than dipshit, said Japan. Like what, said China. How about sunrise? Neil. 
and they stole China's alphabet and wrote a book about themselves. And then they made lots of poetry and art and another book about themselves. Then they stopped moving the capital every time the emperor died and kept it in one place for a while, right here. And they conquered the north, finally. Get that square away. A rich hipster named Kukai is bored with modern Buddhism, visits China, and learns a better version, which is more spiritual. Comes back, reinvents the alphabet, and causes art and literature to be great for a long time. And the royal palace turned into such a dream world of art that they really didn't give a shit about running the country. So if you live outside the palace, how are you supposed to protect your shit from criminals? Hire a samurai. Everyone started hiring samurai. Rich, important people hired samurai. Poor people who could not afford to hire samurai did not hire samurai. The samurai became organized and powerful, more powerful than the government. So they made their own military government. Here, they let the emperor still be emperor, but the shogun is actually in control. Breaking news, the Mongols have invaded China. We've invaded China, said the Mongols. Please respect us, or else we might invade you as well. Okay, said Japan. <laughs> so the Mongols came over, ready for war, and died in a tornado. But they tried again, and had a nice time fighting with the Japanese, but then died in a tornado. Then the emperor overthrows the shogunate. Then the shogunate overthrows him back and moves to Kyoto and makes a new shogunate. And the emperor can still dress like an emperor if he wants. That's fine. Like painting with less colors, collaborative poetry, plays, monkey fun, tea parties, gardening, architecture, flowers. It's time for who's going to be the next shogun. Usually it's the shogun's kid, but the shogun doesn't have a kid. So he tries to get his brother to quit being a monk and be the next shogun. He says okay, but then the shogun has a kid. So now who's it going to be? Vote now on your phones. And everyone voted so hard that the palace caught on fire and burned down. The Shogun actually didn't care, he was off somewhere doing poetry. And the whole country broke into pieces. Everyone is fighting with each other for local power, and it's anybody's game. Knock knock, it's Europe. No, they're not here to take over, they just want to sell some shit. Like yes. clocks, and guns, <laughs> and shit. So that's cool, but everyone's still fighting each other for control. Jesus. Now with guns. And wouldn't it be nice to control the capital, which right now is puppets, with no one controlling them. This clan is ready to make a run for it. But first, they have to trample this smaller clan, which is in the way. Surprise, the smaller clan wins, and the leader of that clan steals the idea of invading the capital and invades the capital. And it goes very well. He's about halfway through conquering Japan when someone who works for him kills him, and then someone else who works for him kills them, and that guy finishes conquering Japan. And then he confiscated everybody's swords, and made some rules, and now I'm going to invade Korea, and then hopefully China, he said, and failed, and also died. But before he died, he told these five guys to take care of his five-year-old son until he's old enough to be the next ruler of Japan. And the five guys said, yeah, right, it's not going to be this kid. It's going to be one of us, because we're grown-ups. And it's probably going to be this guy, who happens to be way more rich and powerful than the others. <laughs> but a lot of people support not supporting him. They have a fight, and he wins, and starts a new government, right here. And he still lets the emperor dress like an emperor, and have very nice things. But don't get confused, this is the new government, and they are very strict. So strict, they close the country. No one can leave, and no one can come in. Except for the Dutch, if they want to buy and sell shit. But they have to go right here. Yeah. Now that the entire country was not at war with itself, the population increased a lot. Business increased, schools were built, roads were built, everyone learned to read, books were published, there was poetry, plays, sexy times, puppet shows, and in Dutch studies, people started to study European science from books they bought from the Dutch. We're talking geography, skeletons, physics, chemistry, astronomy, and maybe even electricity. Over time, the economic and cultural prosperity began to gradually slow down. Knock knock. <laughs> it's the United States. With huge boats. With guns. Gunboats. Open the Matthew country. Perry. Stop having it be closed. An Abner Doubleday. The there was really nothing they could do, so they signed a contract that lets the United States, Britain, and Russia visit Japan anytime they want. Choshu and Satsuma hated this. That sucks, they said. This sucks. And with almost very little outside help, they overthrew the shogunate and somehow made the emperor the emperor again and moved him to Edo, which they renamed Eastern Capital. They made a new government, which was a lot more Western. They made a new constitution that was pretty Western. And a military yeah, the that was Reformation. pretty Western. And do you know what else is Western? That's right, it's conquering stuff. So what can we conquer? Korea. They conquer Korea, taking it from its previous owner, China, and then go a little bit further. And Russia rushes in out of nowhere and says, Stop, no, you can't take that. We were going to build a railroad through here to try to get some warm water. And Russia builds their railroad, supervised by a shit ton of soldiers. And then when the railroad is done, they downgrade it to a fuck ton. Did I say downgrade? <laughs> and Japan says, Can you maybe chill? And Russia says, How about maybe you chill? Japan is kind of scared of Russia. You'll never guess who's also kind of scared of Russia. Great Britain. So Japan and Great Britain make an alliance together so they can be a little less scared of Russia. Feeling confident, Japan goes to war against Russia, just for a moment. And then they both get tired and stop. It's time for World War I. The world is about they to They forgot they were at war for so long. And weapons are getting crazy. And all these empires are excited to try them out on each other. Meanwhile, Japan has been enjoying conquering stuff and wants more. 
and the next thing on their list is this part of China and lots of tiny islands. All that stuff belongs to Germany, which just had war declared on by Britain because Britain was friends with Belgium, which was being trespassed by Germany in order to get to France to kick France's ass because France is friends with Russia, who was getting ready to kick Austria's ass because Austria was getting ready to kick Serbia's ass because someone from Serbia shot the leader of Austria's ass. Or actually shot him in the head. And Britain is currently friends with Japan, so you know what that means. Duh, Japan should take the islands. Which they wanted to do anyway. So they called Britain on the telly to sort of let them know. And then they did it. And they also helped Britain a little here and there with some errands and stuff. Now the war is over, and congratulations Japan, you technically fought in the war, which means you get to sit at the negotiating table with the big dudes, where they decided who owns what. And yes, Japan gets to keep all that shit they stole from Germany. You also get to join the post-war mega alliance, the League of Nations, whose mission statement is to try not to take over the world. Yeah, the about that. Bad, and Japan's economy is now crappy, but the military is doing just fine, and it invades Manchuria, and the League of Nations is like, No, don't do that, it's from the League of Nations, you're not supposed to take over the world. And Japan said, How about I do? <laughs> Japan invaded more and more and more and more of China, and is planning to invade the entire East. You've got mail. It's from Germany, the new leader of Germany. He has a cool mustache, and he's trying to take over the world and needs friends. This also got forwarded to Italy. They all decided to be friends because they had so much in common. It's time for World War II. Germany is invading the Let's neighbors. See. Then they invade the neighbors' neighbors. Then the neighbors' neighbors' neighbors, who happened to be Britain, said, Holy shit. And the United States started helping Britain because they are good friends. And started not helping Japan because they're friends and our friends are not friends. Plus they're planning on invading the entire ocean. The United States is also working on a large, very huge bomb. Bigger than any other bomb. Ever. Just in case. But they still haven't joined the war. War looks bad on TV, and the United States is really starting to care about their image. But then Japan spits on them in Hawaii and challenges them to war. And they say yes. And then Germany, as a symbol of friendship, declares war on the United States also. So the United States goes Didn't to war actually have to. and they help the gang chase Germany back into Germany. And they also start chasing Japan back into Japan. And they haven't used the bomb yet and are curious to see if it works. So they drop it on Japan. They actually drop two. Well, anybody got a white flag? The United States has installed a new government, inspired by the United States government, with just the right ingredients for a post-war economic miracle. And Japan starts making TVs, VCRs, automobiles, and camcorders as fast as they can. And yeah, also they pretty much became, else, become like a rich, mecca of technology. Wide. And then the miracle wears off, but everything's still pretty cool, I guess. Bye. There you go. That's the history of Japan. <sighs> they took out the part where, like, pretty much Matthew Perry started the fucking domino effect that ripped Japan's soul straight out of its body. Yes. Matthew Perry and Abner Doubleday pretty much just... But it was honestly... And I don't consider myself, like, a nationalist, so I have no national identity really to speak of i'm nowhere near america america i'm like the a with the capital a with the circle around it but like <laughs> um <laughs> you know i would argue that america single-handedly is responsible for the destruction of japan which the birth rate has just been well, the birth rate plummeting is from a cultural standard, and it's also from... Where was that cultural econo- no, 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 standard built? No, though. no, it's a cultural and economical standard that has been developed over time. Ever because since the, of... Ever since uh, the westernization and right. the modernization without the changing of the... Uh, of, like, the... Uh, uh, manifest destiny, well, Nate. Just go ahead and say no, it. it's not real manifest <laughs> destiny. It's It's more along the lines of... It's more along the lines of Japan's history has pretty much just been male-dominated and everything, but ever since women have had the ability to vote and have their own jobs and not have to depend on men all the time and be subservient to men because of civil rights that have taken over in Mm -hmm. Japan, yeah, uh, the Japanese culture just hasn't adapted to that very well, and that's why you have women who are literally working for careers more often than men are because right this is happening in almost all modern societies well yeah yeah and this is and it it sucks because but that would not be the case had there not been intervention from no well the outside world as heavy as it can but at the same time 
when they did uh, sec- when they locked down the country, effectively it's the same thing what uh, what a lot of countries have done whenever they pretty much close their borders and close themselves off. They focus on economically strengthening themselves, militarily strengthening themselves, making sure that their population is well educated and well mm-hmm. and and Japan has become and tries to be ethnically homogenous. They're mm-hmm. one of the most ethnically homogenous countries in the world. Well, see, like that's an interesting thing. Japanese. If you imagine many you could pick from a bowl of names that had different countries in there and if you were to pick one out and gave out the same kind of guidelines you'd be like damn that's kind of xenophobic and racist yes and yet that finger never gets pointed in the direction of japan well it's because japan where they well it's the same reason why no one talks shit about china because china is the free labor cap is like the capital of free labor of the world yeah, you want something built for but, cheap. You want something. You want you, you want sweatshops and you want your products cheap. Go to China, Japan. It's effectively the same thing, but not on the same scale because where Japan is more ethnically homo, where they're more homogenous. Is it really cheap to get stuff from Japan though? Is their it's labor not, really it's cheap? Not as cheap as China. I think it's hard it's to compare cheaper, that. But it's a lot cheaper than getting everything here in the United States. Which is why American manufacturing has gone out the window because number they one, they haven't made shitty trade deals like Bill Clinton did. Anyway, um, thank, you, <laughs> thank you very much for that. Uh, oh, not only that, not only that. Dig this because of inflation, because of inflation and the inflating of the dollar, because propping it up due to you know, hey, we got to tie the dollar to something. Let's tie it to oil. Mm. Oh, here we go. Off to the races we go, and now we get. But we get barrels of crude oil, and then all of a sudden, it's just like, oh, so this uh, is tied to the dollar. What's the dollar worth now? Oh, it's worth this. Oh, wait. Oil price. Oh, wait. We have a surplus of oil. Dollar price goes down. It's like, guys, come on. We don't have to, like, at the very moment we go off the gold standard and we start printing more money than we actually have in our coffers, you got a problem. And that's yeah. why Japan is not in trouble with that because Japan well, never did that. They don't but, do deficit spending like we do. You take somebody, it doesn't matter how rich they are, famous they are. You take uh, you take somebody and you break their soul. Yeah. They deteriorate, they crumble. It's over. Every time, yeah. It doesn't matter what what happens to you know, Japan unfortunately their soul got ripped from them with the atomic bombs, which is crazy to say, but you look at their society past that point and it's just withered. Well, it's, and it's withered, sad. but at the same time, for a time, for a time, from like the 1960s until the ni- early 1990s, it boom. Japan was a technological mecca. That's yeah. where literally all the good stuff came from. But... Much like, much like, whenever Western countries reach a certain precipice, mm-hmm. eventually labor in the country becomes too like becomes too expensive for it to really be homogenous. In which that's mm-hmm. why a lot of the stuff that they get is from Korea. A lot of the stuff they get is from Taiwan. A lot of the stuff that they get is from Vietnam mm-hmm. and stuff like that because they have trade deals. The only one that they don't have trade deals with is well, they do in some cases, but. China is very ardently against doing any kind of deals with Japan because of what Japan did, Nanking and all that, which... That, that to me, is a paddleboard game. I, it just back and forth as it, far it, as it atrocities is. between the two. Oh, yeah. China, China, the atrocities that China has done, that's one thing. The atrocities that Japan has done, that's another. In all honesty... Again, they have back, been very shitty to well, each other. Well, throughout history, yeah. dude, throughout history, Japan yeah. has always been looked at by China as oh, the little dwarf island out in the middle of the Pacific Ocean, and whereas uh, Japan is like those Chinese fatheads, you know, they're just like they think oh, we have all this land and all this, all these people, oh, we're so great, you know, and, and it's again, dude. I always say this. You go far back enough in history, nobody's innocent. No. Nobody. There is blood all over this planet. And it goes back to the whole thing, just like humanity is shitty, dude. 
We've been shitty to each other. Cain well, and Abel. As soon as there's another person, man, it's just like yeah, you're drawing human lines history. and you're pointing fingers. Yeah. That's it. Right. I mean, it's. I mean, and the thing is, we have the ability in modern civility to actually talk to each other because you know the world's more connected now than ever. But yet here we are. We're still, drawing lines and pointing yeah, fingers. Here yeah. we are constructing more totems to burn an effigy. And, and we're pointing fingers at the other side saying, that side bad. No, that side bad. And me, and he, and here's the thing. I sit in the middle of the road on a lot of this shit, and that means I catch traffic from both sides. I get called a fence sitter. I get called, you know, on the left side, I get called, you know, a Nazi. On the one, other side, I get called a communist. And I'm just like, guys, I'm not trying to be either of yeah, those things. Shut up. Shut, yeah. <laughs> That's what up, I say. Yeah, because I saw shut someone, up. I saw someone earlier today, uh, like someone posted something on Twitter and I absolutely just like my jaw hit the floor at the ignorance of the statement. Actually they made two statements and I'm just like, okay, this person is really trying to get like like sympathy points on a certain side. And it was literally uh Joe Rogan uh, people who listen to the Joe Rogan podcast are people who used to listen to Alex Jones and are too afraid to admit that they're racist. And I'm just like Bitch, what? Like, and then she made another statement, another one, the uh, gl- uh, an amazing statement, pretty much just saying, people who are too lazy to commit to the to your side, uh, you know, uh, get pretty much like it, pretty much anyone who sits at the says that they're sitting in the center is literally just uh, is literally just a uh, a what was the word she used. A turn, a Nazi turncoat, and I'm just like the the ignorance of these statements from, from yeah. certain people. It, then, We're at again, a very interesting point in our society. Well, where, the political divides in this country are yeah. are ridiculous at this point. Where there's going to be so many people some who, interesting stuff happen. Well, and you know, I'm I'm here for it. I'm alive. Well, well, let's see what happens. Hey, I do know that it's all a joke, and it's really sad to see people manipulated by absolute lies. I want you to find a political campaign in America for me that the people did what they said they were going to do, and I bet happened. you will not find one. Never. Oh no, Obamacare. Nah, Obamacare kind of got passed. The Obamacare that was promised is not the Obamacare that passed. No. Trust me. The, the Obamacare no, that not. we got pretty much just added on to the problem that Medicare and Medicaid created in, yeah. the, in the 90s. It didn't fix anything. It just made the problem worse. But trust me, I, well, I'm, my opinions may differ from his on that situation, but being a beneficiary of the kind of medical care that I got as a child, which my mother didn't have to pay for. And I'm glad she didn't cause she never could have. And I never would have went to the doctor if she had to pay for it. But Obamacare damn sure didn't fix the problem. And it wasn't what was promised no. on the campaign trail. Neither was Trump's wall. Neither was so many other things that get promised and talked and- about. Do you see Hillary Clinton in jail? No, you don't lock her up. Never happened. So you have to take what politicians say with a grain of salt every single time you have to do research if you don't do research and you don't know what you're talking about don't say anything don't get involved you have to research these things because if it's too easy and it's too good to be true it's not true you need to know what you're talking about yeah and you know as crazy as the shit that you just saw in this video was, that all happened to real people in their real lives. And though it's just blips and seconds and statements, the people in charge pull that shit off. So you got to think about how close we could be to the next absolute unreal tragedy decision that's made that changes everybody's lives just based off of what these people in political power are doing. It's worth it to know what the fuck you're talking about, and it's worth it to hold people accountable for what they're doing. Don't ever vote for somebody just because you think they're funny or entertaining, or, well, they speak what's on their mind. Well, that's a all lot good of, A well, lot of people but, throughout history have spoke their mind on how they feel on a platform and got everybody riled up, and it often ended in tragedy. Tragedy. 
That every goes for time. the left wing loudmouths and, and the right, right wing, wing loudmouths. Yeah, it just goes for politicians, period. In general, yeah. Yeah, because as much as politicians want to proclaim that they're on a certain side, the truth is most of them aren't on the side of the people. Can't get any more right wing than Hitler, can't get any more left wing than Mao. Both of them killed millions for no fucking reason. Yep. So. Yeah, well, it is what it is, man. I mean, history <laughs> history is something I've always prided myself on, on being a student of. I always wanted to be a history teacher, but, you know, things didn't pan out the way they were supposed to, and here I am. And now I've got all this knowledge in my head about history, and I, I, I can't help but just shake my head at just... How quick people are to repeat it. How quick people are to be cruel. Yes. That's the thing that always freaks me out. It makes me worry. Will I ever be rallied behind something like that? You know, because you think about the people that were involved in these situations. We're talking about lots and well, lots of people. Well, desperation often breeds like breeds a lack of critical thinking. Yeah. Which, that's what we have nowadays. There's desperation... On so many fronts for what people. though you know well and, for and, what and I know well it's a perceived it's people perceive it as because here's the thing in this country more people in this country don't really like, they say oh homeless people in this country you know they've got so bad so this and so that guarantee you those homeless people have it better than most people in the world at like the greater world at large well and I'm not saying that that's a good thing it's no, not. no 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 it's not. But don't get me wrong, our society has outcasts, and we need to try and find a way to help them and take care of them, because, hey, they're our citizens, and we need to do some, We need to at least try and do something. But well, again, that's where you and I would come to a head on a situation, because you can't tell me that it's appropriate for us as a society that has so much wealth to not be able to provide anything for people like we're going to put spikes up on benches where they can't lay there at night we're going to yeah you know what i'm saying so see, no i th i think that cities, while city, while we are i don't, I don't while of that. it would be different for somebody to be homeless here than somebody to be stuck in the amazon with no shelter you're right that obviously is hyperbole or, and much yeah. worse but that's not what i'm talking about here when we talk we talk about situations for the homeless in the united states of america you have somebody like fucking mr amazon up there mr jeff he's going to go ahead and he's going to make more than like three or four countries in the middle of a pandemic and and we can't provide a fucking like situation well, for somebody to sleep at night while they get their life together well, or a long-term housing situation for somebody who's going to be a detriment to society with schizophrenia living in the streets well, that's crazy again i'm no fan of jeff bezos but yeah. the truth is with his wealth it's not liquid wealth. It's not just something that you can just take away from him or he can just I didn't away. say to just go no, no, drain no, 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 drain no, his not, veins. I'm just saying no, I'm if saying, that exists, well, then exists, there's obviously a huge well, problem. It exists because of the situation that he has created with the company that he made. I'm it's not taking much, anything away from him. No. He is playing the game the way that the board is set up. I'm saying that the people that are in charge who are too, too worried about whether or not they're going to get a pay increase or too worried about what their political party is doing, you know, and how popular they are, who's paying them under the table rather than fixing the real problems, they need to fix shit in the House, in the Senate. They need to fix shit to make sure that people are taxed appropriately that the loophole oh well they're just taking advantage of loopholes well it's their fucking job to fix the loopholes well right well they again, need to be doing that well here's here's another thing too man with with taxes i where i'm an independent business owner i've had to deal with taxes mm -hmm. i every year i've done my taxes there's write-offs there's stuff i've done for charity there's charitable, like, what we're doing for Quinn right now. What we're doing for Quinn mm -hmm. is 100% a charitable uh, a charitable donation, and that's something that is a write-off. And here's the thing. That's money that I could have personally taken if I wanted to, but, I ch but I'm choosing to give it to Quinn because I want Quinn to be happy. And, I, and the thing is, with that, plus all the write-offs that I am allowed to have, I mean effectively like small businesses like what i have i like the gas the gas that mm -hmm. gets me to where i need to be the stuff i need to buy in order to yeah. maintain the business 
the power, the uh, you know, the utilities, the house, everything, everything that goes towards that is a write-off. And even then, I am still paying just over, I think, twenty percent. Right. Of so taxes. why does somebody who's making you know billions of dollar in profit pay zero in taxes? Well, but here truth- you are a small business and you're paying. Well, all this in again, taxes. again, it comes down to what he has given. I mean, Jeff Bezos, Jeff Bezos, don't okay. give me, well, no, 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 no. And I'm not, like I said, dude, I'm no fan of Jeff Bezos, but what he has done, what he is effectively doing is with every penny he makes, mm-hmm. he gives a lot of like his personal income away. Whereas the stocks that like, that's the one thing people don't understand about liquid wealth versus Versus like right. stock wealth, right? Stock wealth that's something that increases due to the stock market. I no, that's I not, understand that's not like where you're going. That he's made, I, I understand but, assets, and yeah, I understand yeah, where money less. can be and where numbers can be out there that aren't just directly in but your pocket. The money that I get he's it, made, the but money he's but made. how many of how many people out there are there and corporations out there? are there that are doing the exact same thing or they're buying up some pharmaceutical com- company in Ireland and they're fucking taking all their executives from here and, you know, just devolving this company and putting them all in charge over here and dodging taxes this way and shit. It's just going on like mad. Yeah. You know, Amazon is just an example of somebody who just really knows how to fucking work it. And that, so that's well, the great again, example. But these people out here in these corporations that are doing it like fucking crazy, you know, I mean, there's obviously shit that needs to be put in place to keep that from happening. And the argument's always like, well, if we do that here in this country, then those companies will just go somewhere fucking else. Every single fucking time someone leaves in America, guess what happens? Somebody takes their fucking spot in well, America. Well, the truth is, with 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 uh, economics, the way you're looking at it with taxation and everything in terms of that, I mean, all in all, man, what Jeff Bezos does, effectively all the money that he gets, mm-hmm. he pretty much gives away about sixty percent of his income, and he lives very and he lives. In a fairly modest way. I never said that. Well, no, no. And and that's the thing. I am not. There's anything wrong with him making money. I can't. uh, No. But here's the thing. Whenever it comes to taxes, Mm -hmm. I don't agree with all the taxes that we have in this country at all. There's things that taxes can go towards, but I think it should be voluntary. And here's why. Because if you're wanting to pay for society, Mm -hmm. I I get taxes pay for society. If you want to take advantage of that society... Say you want to pay for utilities mm-hmm. from the state. Okay, pay for those utilities from the state. But at the same time, you can drill yourself a well and get a filtration system and go through that, which is what my dad does. My dad does not get water from the city. He has his own well system, mm-hmm. and he has a filtration system. And it's a commodity that he chooses to not take. Now, with taxes, you know, paving roads, you know, taking off your garbage, mm-hmm. stuff like that, if you pay for services like that, through the government and the government uses that money to like build better schools, build stuff, you know, you know, put it, you know, fill in potholes, shit like that. Mm-hmm. Like the the thing is, the government does not do does not have a good overhead and oversight committee. There's no oversight on where the government spends their money. The I mean, literally, Congress dictates how much money the government is supposed to spend every year. Yeah, and it has been at a deficit. Ever since 2003. That's why at the beginning of this conversation, I made it clear that that's who my gripe was with. Yeah. Was Congress. And Congress, the House they, and the don't, they don't yeah. want to cut back their spending any. They don't. And if you they did that, then honestly, we would be on a surplus and we would get rid of our deficit. Our deficit right now is $22 trillion. Mm-hmm. It's ridiculous. Can't count that high. No. Sorry. No. <laughs> you, you, you could count that. You could count... Uh, with a hundred, you could count by one hundred thousand. You know, hundred thousand, two hundred thousand, yeah. and you'd still run out of time. But the thing is, man, I mean, I don't, I, I don't see the problem with Jeff Bezos if he wants to give away seventy percent of his income that mm-hmm. he made and put it towards stuff that he knows it's actually going to go towards and get done. Mm-hmm. I don't see the problem with that. Yeah. I do see a problem if he, you know, makes a hundred percent of his money 
you know, exploits tax loopholes, goes to a corporation, buys that corporation, dumps it all into that, and then that corporation through uh, through that a, happens through I'm bankruptcy. Sure. Yeah, that happens a lot with certain companies, and I think those companies that do that should be what well, should be dis- dis- disbanded. That's the one reason why I am mm-hmm. all for anti-monopoly laws. I believe that certain monopolies need to be broken up. E- Case in point, Google needs to be broken up. Disney needs to be broken up. There's a lot of companies out there that own so much intellectual properties, and it doesn't allow anyone to do anything. Like, you're, you, some people are afraid to take a... Like, if you piss in the snow and you make Mickey Mouse's, like, thing in the snow, guess what? Oh, shit, here comes Disney. It's just like, you there's a violation of our copyright, and we don't care if it's just here in the snow and you recorded, like, a video of you doing it. You you owe us money now. Yeah, Intellectual property stuff like that is, but there's so many problems I have with it, dude. Yeah, and, ta- and you know, too many that we can we can't go over in this fucking video. But this video, mu- yo, this conversation will continue, but this video must end. So again, everybody, thank you all for tuning in. Hope that we didn't bore the shit out of you with our uh, diatribe of uh, our problems with the American system. And hopefully, we will see you all in the next one. And if you want to see the uh, original history from Japan or more from Bill Wirtz, click his name in the title of the video. It will take you directly to his channel. And I guess until next time, I'm Nate. I'm Chad. We'll see you then, everybody. Peace out.